Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we explain how to calibrate our electronic speed controller or briefly ESC. This tutorial is the direct continuation of the tutorial on controlling the motor by using the pulse width modulation signals and the TNC 4.1 microcontroller. Here is the experimental setup. It consists of our ESC, lithium polymer battery, TNC microcontroller and 920 kV motor. Our ESC has three connection ports. The first port connects the battery with ESC by using this XT60 connector. Then the second port connects our ESC with our motor and the third port has two functions. The first function is to provide the pulse width modulation signals and the signals are sent by using this white wire over here. In addition, this connection port has two additional wires. The red wire is 5 volt wire from our BEC and the ground wire is actually the black wire of our BEC. The red and the black wire can be used to power an, ex an external, for example, a microcontroller or a servo or something like that. For us, the most important wire is this white wire. This white wire is connected to the pin number 3 of our TNC microcontroller. This breadboard is used as an intermediate connection point. We can see that this white wire goes to the breadboard and then from breadboard we have this white wire again connecting our microcontroller through the pin number 3. Also, the ground wire of our microcontroller is connected to the common ground on the breadboard and this black wire from this connection port, that is from BEC, is connected also to the ground. As we explained in our previous tutorial, the code for controlling the motor by using ESC is relatively simple. Over here in the setup function, we define our pin number 3 to be the output pin and we specify the frequency of our pulse width modulation signals. The frequency is 500 Hz. Then, in the next code line, we specify the resolution of the PWM signal. Over here, we are using 8-bit resolution. And over here, in the main function, or better to say in our void loop function, we simply send the pulse width modulation signals, we specify the pin number 3, and over here, we imp implicitly specify the width of the pulse. This number 150 is currently fixed. However, this number goes from 0, corresponding to basically 0 voltage, to 255, corresponding to completely DC voltage. Any number between 0 and 255 will define actually a pulse width modulation signal with the pulse width that's implicitly defined by this number over here. First time you start to use the ESC, you need to calibrate it. And here's the calibration procedure. First, I will briefly go over this calibration procedure and in the second part of this video tutorial, I will experimentally explain how to calibrate ESC in our motor. Here are the five steps that you need to perform in order to calibrate the ESC motor driver. In the first step, you need to connect your ESC to the microcontroller. However, do not power up the ESC by connecting the battery. That is, the battery should be disconnected from ESC. Then, in the second step, by using the function analog write, in our main loop of the code, we need to send the maximal pulse width. That is, we need to modify the arguments of analog write functions like this. Analog write, pin number 3, and the value should correspond to the maximum value of 255. Then, you need to upload the code. Then, in the step number three, you need to power up the ESC driver by connecting the battery to our driver. 
After you power up the ESC driver, you will hear the beep beep sound or a similar high pitched melody coming from the motor. This melody is actually produced by the motor and is created by the motor driver by sending a very high frequency signal. Then, in step number four, after you hear the sound, send the pulse width that is approximately one millisecond. You can do that by modifying the function analog write like this. Three is the number of the pin and the value is 127. This value of 127 will correspond approximately to one millisecond pulse. Then upload the code. After that, you will hear another beep sound. This means that the ESC driver is calibrated. And then finally, in the step number five, we test the calibration procedure by trying to run the motor by using analog write 3, 137 or 138. In your case, these numbers might be different. For example, you might have to send here 140 approximately. And that's it. So this function should actually start the motor. Again, be careful here. You might need to send a larger number. In the sequel of this video tutorial, I will explain how to perform this procedure on the real experimental setup explained at the beginning of this video tutorial. Let's start. Let us learn how to calibrate the motor. You should perform this operation before you actually start using the motor. Now, I will bring everything in the initial phase. That is, I will detach the battery. Now, while detaching the battery, you have to stop the motor. So the motor should be stopped. This is very important. While the battery is still unplugged from the motor driver, you need to modify this analog write function by placing the maximum value over here. In my case, it's 255. 255 will produce the pulse width modulation signal with the maximum width of the pulse. That is, this will be almost constant voltage. Now, again, while the battery is still unplugged, upload this code to the microcontroller. Okay. The pulse width modulation signal with the maximum width of the pulse is attached to our Tinsy microcontroller. And you can see that signal on our oscilloscope screen. Here it is. We can see that this is almost a constant voltage. Let's zoom in this signal. And over here, you can see what's happening. This is a very, very short time interval for which this signal is equal to zero. Mostly, it has the max value over here. Next, I will attach the battery to our motor driver. And Immediately after I attach the battery, you will see the beeping sound. The motor will beep. So let's observe that. Uh huh, you heard it very well. This number will actually create the pulse width of 2 milliseconds. That is, this will be the maximum pulse width that our controller can produce. Next, we need to change this number such that the pulse width correspond to a signal with a width of one millisecond. To do that, I will change this number to approximately half of the maximum value, 127. Now, while the battery is still attached, upload the code. And now listen what happens. This thing happened, right? The motor was beeping again. To start the motor, we actually need to increase this number. However, the motor will not start if we provide, for example, 128 or 129 or even 130. In my case, the motor will start if I provide over here 
138 or 137 so I didn't type it correctly 138 okay now observe what's happening let me upload everything and the motor starts <laughs> 